welcome to She Codes. Today we have with us Miss Lauren Hassan. She is a founder of Develop Her and a senior engineer too. She founded Develop Her to help women professional advance their careers, stand out, and negotiate for the salaries they deserve. She has been featured in multiple magazines. She has been hired by top companies like Google, Dell, Intuit, and more to train and inspire the women. She has received multiple awards for her work, including Women in IT Awards, Diversity Initiative of the Award, and she was even invited to attend the United Nations to discuss bridging the global gender divide in technology world. So, without any delay, please welcome a soon-to-be-a-book author, a celebrity, Miss Lauren Hassan, to She Cooks. Hey, hello, Lauren. Uh, thank you so much for coming to She Codes. It's an honor to have you on our show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Likewise. So, uh, Lauren, uh, why don't we start, uh, you know, talking about your professional journey so far, uh, the kind of achievement you have got, uh, you know, in the in the throughout the years. So, would love to, you know, understand from you. Well, I, I've definitely had some achievements, but the road to getting there was a, a very long road, and it was it was a lot of a lot of setbacks. So, um, I actually have a degree in computer science and electrical engineering from undergrad, but I did some internships in college, and they basically put me in a closet and said, "Don't talk to anyone." And I said, "I don't know. I don't know if this is for me." And so I actually left tech after after undergrad and went in a completely different direction. I went into the finance industry and then started my first company. And then here in here in the States, we had a, a great recession in 2008 that kind of wiped out, wiped out my company. And I ended up in a dead end administrative job uh, working at a small family business. And it was one of the worst jobs I ever had. And it was just, my boss would berate me daily, telling me I wasn't good at anything, telling me I was too slow, sending me on fake assignments, telling me to run faster. Uh, I mean, it was bad. And eventually I got laid off and I, I had no marketable skills. I had no network and I had like zero job prospects. I mean, it was, it was just a really bad situation. My credit cards were almost maxed out and I was living on tiny unemployment checks, just like barely making ends meet. And uh, I, I threw myself a Hail Mary and I hired myself a career coach. And she had me do an assessment saying, hey, well, what, you know, what should we do next? Because I was stuck and I needed, I needed outside perspective to help me figure out, well, where do I go from here? And it, it said without a shadow of a doubt that I should be developing software. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is some kind of cruel joke. Like, yes, theoretically that's correct, but you know, I completely left that behind and my skills were over seven years outdated. I mean, when I graduated from college, not only did the iPhone not exist, like the razor didn't even exist. I mean, we were very primitive SMS capabilities at the time. And so I remember thinking, how in the world am I ever going to get my tech skills back, much, much less convince someone to hire me? And through a series of of self-advocating steps, you know, learning my skills slowly, hustling and finding one company to say yes and give me a trial period. I, I in fact, only got one yes. Um, and it was for a 90-day trial period at intern level. And I had to come in and teach myself how to, to write code and to succeed. And I had 90 days to prove myself. And the result was not only did I survive that 90 day period, but I thrived. I even won the company award once in that 90 day period. Um, but ultimately two years later, I'd won the company wide award four times. I'd won some major international hackathons, uh, not once, but wow. twice. Um, my work had been featured in Apple's iOS keynote and I had worked on major applications, iPhone and iPad apps for major television networks. And I was one of a hundred U uh, US tech innovators invited to attend the UK G Innovation Summit. And so I literally went from zero, like nothing, to top of my field in, in only two short years. And the story doesn't end there. Uh, when I got back from the UK G Innovation Summit, 
one of my male colleagues who was several years junior to me, he was just getting started in tech. He pulled me aside and complained to me about how little he was making. And I was stunned because not only was he making exactly what I was making at the time, mind you, I had years more experience on him and I was training him, but he had been hired at 50% more than me, five zero than when, when I was at his level. And up until that point, I had suspected I was underpaid, but they kept saying, well, you're just not there yet. You're not there yet. And I bought it hook, line and sinker. And now I had hard, solid proof that, okay, Lauren, you don't just suspect you're underpaid. Now you know for a fact. And so you know, I'll be honest, I was mad. At first I was mad. And then I shifted gears and said, okay, being mad isn't gonna get me the outcome that I want. And so I took action. I invested, you know, lots of money in, in, in resources to help me learn to negotiate. And honestly, the best learning I got was through trial and error. Um, and the result of that two years later is I tripled my salary. And that that additional amount that I was able to earn is a six figure amount. And that's six figures that go in my pocket every single year. And, and so, you know, a couple of years ago, I kept saying, well, someone should do something about this help women realize that there is a path forward that you can pave your own path in, in tech and, and and that you can change your financial future by learning to negotiate and i realized well okay i'm someone <laughs> i'm not i'm not Cheryl sandberg i'm not in the executive suite but i am someone who's figured it out and so i found a developer and since then i've, I've won a lot of awards i have an online salary negotiation course um, where i teach women step mm -hmm. by step through how i negotiate and i've won a bunch of awards for that um and then i have a new book coming out um which is uh my my, my whole program on how i went from rock bottom to top of field in, in just two short years and the five simple things that i did I and mean, it was not rocket science that i did to get ahead but i i did five consistent things over and over again um that enabled me to get great results and and now I, now I, I, what most people don't realize is I don't run developer full time. I work full time on the front lines of tech myself. Um, so I'm just like, when I take the stage and I speak at big companies, you know, like Google and Dell and, and, and Armor and Intuit, um, oftentimes I've, I've been writing code that morning. Um, so I work remotely for a Silicon Valley payments company and, and I love what I do. Um, and so, so now I work with big companies and women alike to really move the needle to bridge the gender opportunity, leadership and pay gaps. That's amazing. That's amazing. You actually brought a couple of good points about uh, how you changed the entire, uh, you know, you, you changed, you transformed your career, you sort of bridged the pay gap that you uh, figured out. Uh, what was what were the emotions you had while you realized that you know there's a huge pay gap I have uh, as compared to the male colleagues? Uh, what were those emotions and you know what kept you running uh, towards achieving what you wanted to? So number one, the first one was anger. It was um, it was like wait you. I I didn't have the word for it back then, but now we do. It's called gaslighting, where like they tell, like you know you're underpaid, but they tell you you're not, even though you really are. And it was, it was anger. It was like you guys have bold faced lied to me, um, like and kept me underpaid, and you know just took advantage of. And I felt taken advantage of. And then I shifted that into okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take action on this and really foundational developer is being your own best self advocate and owning your outcome and for me that was fear because I had to invest money that I was living basically paycheck to paycheck not even that you know going into debt and I you know I invested substantial money in learning how to negotiate through courses through coaches through online learning through books and the, and that was fearful because I didn't know, I, I, I suspected that if I didn't invest, that I'd definitely stay stuck. But I didn't have a guarantee that if I did invest that I would get a better outcome. And so there was fear of the unknown. Um, and now in hindsight, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. I mean, my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner. I mean, I invested like seven to 10 grand and I got a, a six figure return within two years. And that's 
every single year. I mean, that's a huge return on investment. I mean, my only regrets that I didn't right. do sooner, but I didn't know that at the time. And there was a lot of fear. Um, and that's what I tried to do with developer is, is do this differently. And so I have a low price program that, that walks women through everything that I did, that I invested thousands of dollars of learn. I've, I've tried to make it both accessible and affordable to women. And it, you know, cut, takes the risk out of it because I, you, you know, this framework is going to work and it comes with the, the guarantee that it's going to work. Um, and so that's where I've tried to be the change in the world that I so desperately needed because I remember what that was like when, when I was just getting started. That's amazing. It's it's very inspiring uh, for the women out there because uh, every woman sort of feel these kind of emotions, uh, you know, uh, in, in their lives because sometimes we are in recession, sometimes uh, we have to manage home and job together, sometimes we choose to be with the family for you know uh, some period of time and getting back to job. So these are emotions every woman you know uh, are feeling uh, in, 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 in their career. So very important aspect that you mentioned, keep learning uh, basically that, that was your success mantra I would say keep learning and being persistent being uh, you know uh, channelizing the energy in a right direction is, yeah, is and, what kept you, you know, yeah. I don't know if, it, it, if imposter syndrome is something that is widely talked about uh, where you're at but imposter syndrome is is rampant with women here in the states and it, it's where you know you don't quite feel you feel like everyone else sees you differently but you don't feel you feel like a fraud you don't feel like you're there and like you don't feel like you're enough yeah. um and i i deal with that to this day and i talk with women executives at all levels who also deal with it it's not just for people who are starting out it's, it's common across levels and it, it, it doesn't go away it just improves with time and then you level up and you feel it again and so the way I combat that is I ground myself in data and that's foundational to how I train women to negotiate is it, 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 if you think about it, the reason we're great at software engineering is because we're good with information. Like you can't refute data, right? And so if you ground yourself mm. in data and I, and I train in the course, you know, not just looking at one data source, but looking across four different types of data sources and then going deep within each data source, that builds confidence when you get without you know without a shadow of a doubt from multiple sources how much you should be making that gives you the confidence so no you're not feeling that you should get paid more you know how much your market value is and then you can go advocate for yourself with more confidence and, and that's really what developer is all about it is helping you build the confidence you need to better advocate for yourself that's that, that that actually is very insightful because uh, salary negotiation is one aspect that you know everybody has to learn and it's better to take you know good courses to understand how we can be better at it so uh, and there are a couple of startups also uh, running on on this concept and i'm happy to hear that developer is also you know helping women to achieve this uh, goal so uh, what is your biggest takeaway? Uh, you've been developing this company for years now uh, and, and you have a very uh, vast experience as well in the industry. So what has been your biggest takeaway uh, from the industry and any message that you want to give to women engineers? Uh, so the biggest takeaway is that you're never done learning. You are always, I mean, technology changes so quickly. I mean, for me, when I started out, I did iOS. Even if I stayed in iOS, mm -hmm. Apple changed the language to Swift and every year they roll out new APIs. And so if you're not constantly learning, like you have to get comfortable with retooling and learning new technologies. Um, and I didn't quite recognize that when I started out is that you got to get uncomfortable being uncomfortable and learning new technologies. And that, that actually makes is a mark of a mature engineer that you can learn new, new technologies quite quickly. Um, I, it, it, the number two takeaways, you have to advocate for yourself, like sitting around and waiting for someone to notice you doing good work. Yes. There are some people who get noticed, not likely to happen though. Most women 
sit around waiting for for people to notice good work and in the meantime the men are out there telling people about the work that they're doing and so I recognize that if I do want to get ahead it's on me to tell people about the work that I did and become my own best self advocate Okay, talking about women, uh, do you also see there's a gap in uh, uh, there's a gap in women being into a leadership position in technology company or companies across the world? How how do we fill that gap? Because uh, right now uh, every company has a diversity target, uh, organizational target to fulfill. Even though a lot of women are not. Uh, or not getting chance or probably not coming up to take up that uh, particular challenge maybe because of you know issues at home or maybe they don't they don't feel that that ready and they can do it what do you see that as what is the reason probably and how do you see uh, you know in, in future how women will be taking up the leadership positions i hope it's improving and i see markers of that i think one of the biggest challenges right now is that there there's a lot of there's a lot of women at the junior level uh, you know getting into tech problem is there aren't enough at the senior the senior engineer level and the executive level and so you see a, a real leaky pipeline and a lot of fallout between the entry level and the mid and then the scene is a very senior level um, and so so that's what I'm trying to do with developer is help women build the skills and confidence so that they don't get discouraged and leave tech um, and so that they do realize oh wait I can get the senior leadership role that that maybe I didn't think I could get but I, I realize now that I can get I'm sure I'm sure uh, that's wonderful uh, that you're doing uh, uh, through developer especially to bridge this particular gap because this has been the problem since ages you know uh, industry is not able to uh, address it so um, any other message that you want to give to women uh, since we are wrapping up uh, do you have any uh, thoughts any suggestion or uh, you want to convey something for women who are taking breaks uh, maternity breaks coming back to the work any thoughts around those lines i took a seven year break and had no skills to build on and i was able to get back I, i'll be honest it was hard work it was absolutely worth it. I mean, my life today is night and day different than it was nine years ago. I mean, even five, three or five years ago, my life is totally different. It just gets exponentially better over time. And so, you know, there, I don't want to lie that it is going to be hard work, but it is so worth it. It's just like, you know, you know, having a baby, the labor is hard, but the result is worth it. Um, and and it's the same thing with growing a career in tech. It's it's incredibly rewarding. Um, and, and don't don't sit around waiting for someone to notice you or to help you or give a leg up. I mean, the best advice I can give that that I end my book with is you know invest in the change that you want in your life. If you if you won't invest in yourself, like why should anyone else invest in you? And, and that's why I founded Developer. Uh, so that so that women have the opportunity um, to 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 get the skills that they need to go to the next level. And so I, I'd love to, to tell everyone about Developer. I've got a podcast where I interview top top technical women. I have an online course where you can learn step by step how to negotiate uh, for the salary you deserve. And then I've got a book coming out um, early 2021. If you get on my newsletter, you'll be the first to hear about it. Where it's how I went from absolutely nothing to top of field and the five simple things I did to get there. Absolutely. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, read your book. Uh, that will be definitely inspiring uh, for the women. Um, and uh, what is the best way to reach out to us if women who are watching this video want to reach out to you? What is the best way? Uh, to yeah, reach out so, to I, so I actually formalized the program because I get lots of women who reach out to me. I have a developer membership program. So I invite women to okay. become a member of developer. I accept connection requests on LinkedIn all the time um, so send me a connection request on LinkedIn and I post updates there um, and then join my newsletter I, I, I interact with people through my developer newsletter um, and, and I, I, I prefer writing code more than I prefer writing prose but uh, I do my best to get that newsletter out as well 
thank you so much thank you so much lauren for your time uh, your valuable time um, to us and uh, uh, coming to she codes uh, it was an honor uh, speaking with you and uh, we will be in touch and uh, yeah fantastic thank you so much yeah.